Hi everyone, this is Board Games Bourbon. I'm Glenn Flaherty, and I want to tell you about Once Upon a Castle, which is one of my favorite roll and writes. And I know it looks like it's for kids, and it is for kids, but I actually think it's one of the ones that uh, gives me all the right choices and the right atmosphere. Now, in Once Upon a Castle, what you're trying to do is you are trying to create a castle, and you're trying to build. 12 parts of this castle. Now we open the box here, we're gonna get instructions in a whole bunch of different languages. And when we open it, what we're gonna get are these pads of paper. Now, these pads of paper actually have two sides. One is blank where you can draw your own castle. The other has an outline of a castle, which is probably there to help the little ones. It has a level one game, a level two game, but the level two game I think will be a hit at any game night. Now in this castle, you kind of have like the, the tower here. You have these columns, walls, uh, flags that you can put down in the game. People that you're going to draw, you can do them really creatively. Uh, you're then going to get a uh, four-point cloud in your sky if you're the first person to build everything in your castle. And you're going to get four points if you're the first person to build this tower here. But that is only the beginning of the gameplay that makes this a lot of fun. Now, we go further into the box, and what we're going to get here are these boards. Now, these boards have two different levels, and they're going to have matching cards to go as well. And the way this works is really one half of the interesting play. As we roll dice in this game, we're going to get resources, and these are the die. Now, these die are awesome. They're big, they're heavy, they clank. Check this out. This is the size of a regular die. These are enormous. And what these resource die do is they give you different things. They give you wood, they give you rock, they give you food, they give you coins, they give you people, and then they give you wild, okay? Now, when you roll those twice, essentially, you're going to put little tokens down on your board. And I'm going to show this in more detail. And when you do that, you're going to get different things. Like if you put one coin down here, you could trade it in immediately to write a one-point flag in your castle. If you are a little bit more patient and you got the coins, the rock, and the food, you can not only build a wall, but you could put two people into your castle. And what's the point of getting different people? The more people that you get, the more points you're going to get. So I could eventually get up here and get 20 points if I draw my people, and it does come with time. There are other things in here in the basic game. If I complete these two, I'm going to get part of my tower and a card. And there's a market for cards in the game. That's the second half of the fun part of this game. Uh, you know, you can get a five-point tower or, excuse me, column, two-point column, three people in your place, two walls and a person, okay, so on and so on. Then there is a blue side to the board, and it's more complex, okay? It is going to have uh, more that you have to do. You can get flags, walls, cards, but now you can also get instant uh, gratification. And that comes, by the way, of the advanced cards in the game. Okay, so let me show you what that's about. And what I'll do right now is I'll just set up the board and show you how we played a little bit. Okay, and we're going to play on the blue side for this demonstration. I'm going to put my pad of paper right there. I'm going to put my two dice there. I'm going to keep this handy because this uh, rule book also explains all the cards. And I'm also going to put a market of cards out here for us. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to have a market of cards. And the cool thing in this game is there's a whole host of cards in this game that you can purchase and they will give you uh, special powers. Now you get these cards when you trade in, like for example, on this blue board here, if I get wood and a rock, I trade it in, I can build part of my tower and I can grab a card. And then the cards kick in at different points throughout the game. Got my handy uh, pen there because I, uh, I love doing everything in pen because I like committing to my mistakes. So what do these cards do? Well, first you're going to create a market here. And the market's pretty interesting. Okay, so we'll, hopefully the camera's going to pick this up there. And I can uh, make this look somewhat straight on the camera. Okay, so let's say I were to play here and let's get our tokens out. Because in the game we're going to get our tokens that uh, each player can use. And I love that they look like spree. Eh, let's just say it's such a colorful, vibrant game. And it's so much fun to draw, especially when you get people over here, by the way, and you decide, you know, you're going to make your uh, your wizard. <laughs> and everybody is a little different. I love it. 
Okay, so what's going to happen here uh, is, let's say I traded in a wood and a rock, and I draw part of my uh, tower here, Call and sometimes they call this the dungeon altogether. Now I trade it in. Now I can get a card. Well, if I get this card here, what this is going to say is... Uh, it's worth a crown and the overall value of this card, and let's see if I can pick it up and put it on the camera. The overall value of this card is going to be worth however many crowns I end up with uh, in my hand at the end of the game. Okay, this one over here says instantly when I complete the instant, I get to put two wood tokens on my board. So I can maybe say I want that wood and I want that wood. This one over here says uh, this is another instant effect, the wizard. And let's see if I can pick this up in my hand and get it into the camera there. It says, you may move, when you complete this, two of your personal board tokens. So what that means is, let's say I had these here and here. Well, if I completed by some, you know, feat this magical power, I say I trade this in to activate my card that's in my personal tableau. I can move two tokens. I can move this here. Now on my next turn, if I so choose, I can trade this in and I can get two people in a wall. So I could go, hi, I'm the big blob man. And over here, I am a snowman uh, with my corn cob pipe and my hat. And I'm going to complete this wall. So now I'm 1 12th of the way to finishing my design, which is pretty fun. Part of the fun, I gotta tell you in this game, is deciding how you're gonna divvy this up. And I can't say I've seen this mechanism in any other game before. The art is so endearing, but let me not get sidetracked. Let's talk about some of the card powers, right? This here again says, if you get this card, you'll get points for every flag you have. This says you get points for every column you have. And again, you can combo and have synergy because this card over here gives you crowns for just the total amount of crown cards you have. This is pretty cool. Uh, this says here, this is an instant one. You get two coin cards, love it. You can, you can put coin tokens onto your board and fill up stuff. Similarly, this is saying that you can get two rock in there. This one is, uh, you can do this at different times and you can exchange a wood for a rock. Uh, stone or vice versa and this pretty much triggers whenever it means it's always available this here if you do that you get twice the resources of something okay uh here this is always available and you can trade in when somebody rolls a coin you can fill in something to give you a two point uh flag now flags are not part of the structure i think those are just extras so it's really good to just kind of rush and get those let's look at a few more so you can get a real sense for the variety in here that the this is where the richness comes from this core this card by the way is worth one point at the end of the game so you want to be getting these anyway but also the instant power is you get to four uh fill in four people that's huge uh, here, this is always available. When the two-person side of the die shows up, you can put a coin on your board, uh, a token on your board. This is worth one point. It's always in effect. When you get the question mark on those amazing dice, right there, you can put, not only will you get the resource, uh, you uh, will get a two-point cloud in your land and you're just going to go like do 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 look at that that's a two point cloud i put in anyway the game plays really quickly it's incredibly fun to do i can't tell you how much i've enjoyed every play of this i don't care if people say it is for kids it's one of my favorite rolling rights okay so i really suggest you check that out now as far as the kids board um the only difference is you don't have like the instant powers there and the instant cards are more simple in nature. Like you get this card, it's worth one point, end of the day, okay? The insert is great. The art is great. Again, that is called Once Upon a Castle. I'm truly in love with it. It's by Blue Orange Games. It plays two to four players. Hard to say what the time count is. It says it plays in about half hour. Mm, I'll say that's about right. All my games are, you know, probably around 20, but we're all older. Although I did play this with some youngins. And boy, they're ecstatic out of their mind. Okay, that's Once Upon a Castle, everyone. If you have questions about the gameplay, please let me know. And uh, thanks so much for supporting the channel. Talk to you soon. Bye.